connected with the rest of the passage. You would think when Allah spoke about the stars or the sun and the sky, or rather the sun and the stars and the mountains, you were expecting to hear about the sky over there. But there's a break and now Allah mentions the sky. Why does He mention it here? There's some literary functions of it that we'll see immediately when we come to the next ayat. What time is Aisha, by the way? 9.15. 9.15, okay. So we'll end at 9.10, inshallah. Okay. So, وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ كُشِطَتْ You guys know what the word sama means, right? That which is above. Literally, it means that which is above. Commonly speaking, sky, but it's a little more comprehensive than that. Then there's the word kushitat. It comes from kashata, like kashata al-ba'ir. He skinned the camel. To peel the skin off the camel once you slaughter it, this is kashat. Kashat is a butcher. Because one of the first things he does before he starts chopping away is what? He skins the, skins the thing. So it's kashat. Okay? Uh, similarly, kishat is the peeled skin itself. Now, one of the, this could be literal, that it'll feel like the sky has a skin and it's being peeled, but it's more appropriate to understand the imagery of the ayah here. Allah Azza wa Jal, in another place, He mentions when the sky on the Day of Judgment will be red. فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانَ In Surah Al-Rahman. Right? It'll turn like a rose, and a brilliant red. Here Allah says the sky's skin will be peeled. When its sky's skin will be peeled. When you skin the, or, or peel the skin of an animal, what's exposed? The red, right? The red flesh, the blood, that's what's exposed on the inside. So it's illustrating how blood red the sky is going to turn. It'll look like its skin has been peeled. That's what's being said. But then it begs the question, why would the sky look red? The sky is a reflection of what's going on on the earth. It reflects the textures of the earth. So the sky looks blue, especially blue over the ocean because it's a reflection of the earth. Now when something's going on on the earth that is so vicious in color that even the sky has turned red. So now let's look in the next ayah to find what is it that has happened on the earth. وَإِذَا الْجَحِيمُ سُعِرَتْ And when even the hellfire has been blazed and sa'ara is to cause a fire that towers high. So you put things in the fire that makes the flame reach higher and higher and higher. So when the jahim, this vicious hellfire, this glaring and staring hellfire has been given towering flame. That's su'irat, not just blazed. Blazed is too common for too many words in the Qur'an. Burrizat al-jahimu, su'irat al-jahimu, every word gets blazed. But this is actually a towering kind of flame. And it towers so high that its redness is now even affecting the texture of the sky, making the sky look like it's been peeled. Subhanallah. But now understand how this is beautifully connected and in a scary way connected to what we read in the conclusion of the last surah. In the last surah, we found some faces towards the very end. Right? Some faces on that day, they're going to have this black dust on them, right? And overwhelmed with black smoke. Black smoke from what? From this blazing torch of a fire. That has overwhelmed them in smoke and they're just blackened by it. This is, this is, the two things are now connected together. This is the fire, these are the faces. How, how one, it's like the camera angles. Nowadays we appreciate that in film very easily. The camera goes here, then the camera goes there. Right? And that's how the, the, the language of the Qur'an is. It makes you look here, then it makes you look there. It makes you visualize these things. So, وَإِذَا الْجَحِيمُ سُعِرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ Such a beautiful word. When the, when the paradise is brought close. The word uzlifat is the passive form. When, when al-jannah, when the lush garden is brought near. This illustrates one for one the paradise already exists. Because if it didn't exist, it, was, it would be created, but it's been brought near. It's waiting for the believers. May Allah enter all of us into the paradise. In the previous surah, we found another kind of face. We found wujuhun yawma'idhim musfirah, dahikatum mustabshirah. In the previous surah, some faces are lit bright. Like they're looking at something brilliant and their face turns bright, bright and they can't sm stop laughing. They can't wipe the smile off their face. What have they seen? This Jannah that has been brought. Close. وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ Now look, uh, uh, some things about the word uzlifat. Zulf in Arabic means a portion or a great portion of something. The, the word zulfa means status. The zulfa means status. وَإِنَّهُ لَهُ عِنْدَنَا لَزُلْفَى وَحُسْنَ مَآبِ When Allah speaks of Sulaiman alayhi salam, He says he has high status with us. He uses the word zulfa. Now, Allah did not say, وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ قُرِّبَتْ When the hellfire is brought close. He said, وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ Another word that you may know that is close to the word azlafa uh, is the word muzdalifa. From izdilaf. When the ta becomes fused with dal. Izdilaf. Muzdalifa is the field or the, the region that you stop which is very close to Mina. 
That's why it's called the close by. It's the close by place. And it is also an honored place. When somebody is brought close, somebody is brought close in order to honor somebody. So in other words, وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ means when paradise is brought close in honor of the believers. This is in honor of them. قُرِّبَتْ just brought close. But this, this uh, is laugh actually is to bring close out of honor. So the paradise has been depicted as an honorary gift to the believer. It's like an award ceremony. SubhanAllah. وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ Another uh, interesting place we find this word in, in a, one of its variations is in a hadith. This hadith is re- reported by Sulaiman ibn Musa radiallahu anhu. He says, "Izdalifu ila Allahi bi rak'atayn." Come closer to Allah, honor yourself by coming closer to Allah by making two rak'ah. Right? Every time you want to come close to Allah, make two rak'ah. It comes in the singular form in another narration also, "Izdalif ila Allah bi rak'atayn." Plural and in singular. One last comment about this ayah. We find Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions in another place, and this is your homework, find it where it is. وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٌ Allah says, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٌ Now here we find, وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ The other place we find, أُزْلِفَتْ الْجَنَّةُ So this is the noun first, and that one is what? The verb first. And what did we say? What's the normal way of speech? The verb first or the noun first? The verb first. That place, Allah illustrates how easy it is. For Allah to bring the Jannah close to the believers. Easy like the fi'l form of the sentence is easy. Here he speaks to the kafir and realizes who thinks the only thing close to these, these believers is destruction and poverty. And Allah says, no, no, no. In, as a matter of fact, the thing being brought close to them and the honor that's going to be given to them is al Jannah itself. So this is actually illustrating the shocking way and the strong way in which Allah talks about the Jannah coming to the believers to the kafir. Understand, when we think Allah is talking about Jannah, who do we think about? Allah is talking to who? <coughs> to the believers. Here, no, He's slapping the disbelievers, saying, no, the honor is in fact coming to the believers. That's why, وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ At the end of all of this, there's a fi'liya sentence. This is, this is a sentence that begins with a verb. All of these began with what? A noun. But the conclusion of all of them, jawab al these are all jumla sharqiyya, by the way. When, 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 when. When you say, when I go here, when I go to school, when I finish my job, when I finish reading this book, right? when I write my paper, then, and you stop there, then the person says, well, then what? What are you going to do after that? Why are you telling me when? Because a when statement, you need to conclude it. There needs to be a conclusive statement, right? a concluding remark. The concluding remark for all of these previous statements is one statement. And that is, عَلِمَتْ نَفْسُ مَا أَحْضَرَتْ Every person knows what it forcefully brought forward, what it has to present for itself. We'll talk about the word ahtarat in a second, but first of all realize this, in its simplest form, every person knows what it has to present, what he or she has to present before Allah. That's the basic idea of the ayah. And it's presented in fi'l form. Allah didn't say nafsun alimat ma ahdarat. He said alimat nafsun, the normal form is used. Why? Because this conclusion that every person knows full well what it has to present for itself is not some high or inescapable, some hard to imagine concept. Everybody already knows that. Everybody already knows inside, we know very, very well what idea, what, what actions I have to present for myself, what I've done for myself. Everybody knows this. So Allah puts it in the natural form. Alimat nafsu ma because this is a natural conclusion for the human being. For the kafir even, this is natural to him. Even he knows what he's done. Even he knows what he, has to, what he has to show for himself, literally. So there's a transition in the language to illustrate this is already within yourselves. This is not some abstract thing that you never heard about before, like the sun being wrapped up, or the stars falling apart, or the mountains moving, or the oceans boiling over. That may seem unnatural to you, so a stronger form of language is used. But this is something deep within your psyche. You already know this. Alimat nafsu ma ahdarat. So this is the conclusion. Now, here's the thing. Understand, when there's a jawab a shart, it goes back to every jumla shartiya, every single shart that was there. In other words, to understand and appreciate this word, every person knows what he has to present for himself. First, we go back to every ayah that we read before. Number one, So when the sun gets folded up, a person will realize, what do I have to present for myself? Then he looks at the stars, then he concludes, what do I have to show for myself? Then he sees the mountains moving, then he says, what do I have to show for myself? 
Then he sees the Ishar traveling, he doesn't care. He's only worried about what he has to show for himself. Then the vicious animals are standing next to each other, he's still considering about, concerned about himself. This is actually the most beautiful tafsir of the previous surah we found. For every single person on that day, there will be a preoccupation that will make him unconcerned about everything around him. So he sees the sun, he sees the mountains, he sees the stars, he sees the animals, he sees the oceans, all of it he sees, but what's the conclusion of all of it? Man, I know, what I, I know what's coming. I know what's coming. That's all he can think about is himself. Alimat nafsum ma ahdarat. Subhanallah. Let's talk a little bit about the word ahdarat here. First of all, in the previous surah, Allah Azza wa has given the human being an opportunity to fix what he has to show Allah. To fix himself. There he, he mentioned to him that he created him from a nutfa, that he, you know, he precisely calculated him. Thumma sabila yassarahu. He laid out the path for him so he may live his life with guidance. He facilitated the path of guidance for him. ثُمَّ أَمَاتَهُ فَأَقْبَرَهُ Then eventually he gave him life, or gave him death, and put him in his, had him put in his grave. Right? So all of this was the time of opportunity for this person to fix and to show something for himself. But now if he wasn't able to do so, then the concluding comment there was, كَلَّا لَمَّا يَقْضِي مَا أمره. No, the human being was not able to fulfill what his Lord had commanded him to do. He wasn't able to do justice to that act. Now if you, you know, just like a child who hasn't done the homework assignment, it shows up, or hasn't studied for the test, and now the, the test results are about to be given, handed back. Before they're even handed back, does the kid already know what he, knows what he got? He, he knows deep inside, he's already feeling it, right? So, Ali <laughs> nafsun ma So that it's already too late, you, were, you had the opportunity to study, to prepare, to fix yourself, you didn't take a chance of that, now you know what's coming. So that's basically what the ayah is saying, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. Now, hadara to present itself, to present, or to be present even, hadara. Like hadarna dars, we, we, we were present for the dars, right? We were present for the lesson. Ahdara is to take something and bring it for presentation, and it actually includes the implication of iltirar, right? Of forcing, meaning you bring something forward on stage and it doesn't want to be there. A reluctant presentation. Every person knows what is it that they have to present for themselves. And you know, even the believer is going to be nervous on that day. He's not fully confident until the whole scales have been counted. So everybody's nervous about what they have to present. And this presentation is not even something voluntary. They're reluctant about it. That's captured in the word ahdarat. So every person knows what's about to come. By the way, just a, a quick few comments before we take a break about this word ahdarat and amal. They have been paired in the Quran in more than one place. The actions being presented. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Ali Imran, يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا right? The day on which every person, from any good thing they did, they'll see it presented right before them. مُحْضَرًا From the same hadara, like ahdarat here. It's the same maf'ul of the same pattern even, from, from if'al. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا In Surah Al-Kahf. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا They will find whatever they did standing right in front of them. So it's like our actions have been given a visual form. This is similar, or it's an opening up of what Allah said before, وَإِذَا الصُّحُفُ نُشِرَتْ When the scrolls have been given life, when they've been spread out open, it's like you can see your deeds in front of you, standing right there in front of you, looking you in the face like a mirror. So we'll stop at this ayah, inshaAllah ta'ala, because the next series of ayat are basically the next passage and the next half of the surah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.